I just felt an aftershock. Oh. I think it was just the chair moving. Felt it. <laughs> Earthquake sickness. Renee finally looked at me when she said his name, her face apologetic. Oh, I mumbled, fixing my eyes on a pair of joggers as they passed us, drenched with sweat. You two are more serious than I've been thinking, she went on. I frowned, quickly reviewing the last two days in my head. Edward and I had barely touched, in front of her at least. I wondered if Renee was about to give me a lecture on responsibility too. I didn't mind that the way I had with Charlie. It was, wasn't embarrassing with my mom. After all, I'd been the one giving her that lecture time and time again in the past 10 years. There's something strange about the way you two are together, she murmured, her forehead creasing over her troubled eyes. The way he watches you, it's so protective, like he's about to throw himself in front of a bullet to save you or something. I laughed, though I was still not able to meet her gaze. That's a bad thing? No, she frowned as she struggled for her words. It's just different. He's very intense about you and very careful. I feel like I don't really understand your relationship, like there's some secret I'm missing. I think you're imagining things, Mom, I said quickly, struggling to keep my voice light. There was a flutter in my stomach. I'd forgotten how much my mother saw. Something about her simple view of the world cut through all the distractions and pierced right to the truth of things. This had never been a problem before. Until now, there had never been a secret I couldn't tell her. It's not just him, she set her lips defensively. I wish you could see how you move around him. What do you mean? The way you move. You orient yourself around him without even thinking about it. When he moves, even a little bit, you adjust your position to the same at the same time, like magnets or gravity. You're like a satellite or something. I've never seen anything like it. She pursed her lips and stared down. Don't tell me, I teased, forcing a smile. You're reading mysteries again, aren't you? Or is it sci-fi this time? Renee flushed a delicate pink. That's beside the point. I know that was really long, but I really like that passage. I like their conversation. Me too. I think it's really sweet. Renee being away from Bella has helped her mom mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, guys. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> the most awkward right. people <laughs> we just channel bella and edward i <laughs> that is probably not wrong <laughs> uh this is Marin right here uh, yep this is emily and we are remember, remember twilight, twilight. <laughs> we oh. are reading eclipse <gasps> And talking about Eclipse. Oh, yes, we are. This week we are in Chapter 3, Motives. Oh. What happened last week? Oh. <laughs> wow. I'll remind you. Ready? Thanks. <laughs> Edward! <laughs> all right. Uh, Edward broke Bella's truck so she couldn't go visit Jacob. Oh, no. That's <sighs> problematic. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> this week on what will Edward Cullen do wrong? Oh no, Edward! Edward, try harder, sweetie. He does. <laughs> he, he does. He tries so hard. He's working on it. This is his first relationship. <laughs> Just like it's Bella's first relationship. <laughs> Emily had to put her bangs down for that. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, it is his very first. As if he doesn't have, like, three examples of good relationships literally living with him. Not only that, but a hundred years of examples <laughs> to draw upon. Oh, <laughs> oh, Edward. It's okay. We'll get there. He's trying hard. <clears throat> he hears a lot, but he doesn't pay attention. <laughs> he ignores a lot. You know what I mean. I do. Uh, so, <laughs> this chapter picks up as... Bella and Edward are driving home from the airport after visiting Renee. I know. I love it. I, When I first read this, I was like, oh my gosh, we skipped over the whole trip? But know. then they do like a little flashy backy, mm -hmm. which makes me very happy. Because as much as I am not a Renee fan, I want Bella to have a good relationship with her mother. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I think that this is the type of relationship where when you're not together all the time it's better mm -hmm. and so I was like really looking forward to seeing their time together 
And so when they did the flashback, I'm like very happy about it. And then the way that they did this in the movie, how they went and they did it makes me so happy. And I cried. I was just like, I love seeing Renee and Bella together in a healthy way, like in an adult relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. I'm she gives her as the, if I remember watching oh, this part it's of the so movie. sweet because they're in Florida <laughs> they're sitting outside on the deck and Edward is inside because it's sunny <laughs> he's doing his homework or whatever uh -huh. and they're having this conversation on the deck chairs and Renee's of course being very quiet Bella he's so weird around you <laughs> and Bella just kind of looks back at him and he's he looks at her and smiles because he can hear everything they're saying and he can hear all of Renee's thoughts but um, it's very sweet and then Renee gives her a uh, t-shirt blanket of all of Bella's t-shirts. Right. And it's very, very sweet. That and I just cute. cried. I was like, I love that. Because I, I love my mom and I have a great relationship with her. And it's just, that's what I want for Bella more than anything is for her to have a mom-daughter friendship than a daughter who's a mom-daughter. <laughs> you know what I mean. A daughter-mom-mom-daughter relationship. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For sure. All right, so these guys are coming home. They're coming home. Um, Edward asks Bella if she's sad to be leaving, and she goes, no, I'm relieved. My mom watches me way too closely and is picking <laughs> up on things that I don't typically have to worry about hiding around Charlie. Yeah. Um, and, like, the line you heard in the beginning, uh, Renee notices exactly all the weird <laughs> things that they do around each other, like Edward being very twitchy and Bella... Uh, in turn being twitchy because he is being twitchy. <laughs> yeah. Or it's something as simple as like, and this is, I've, I, I've talked about my best friend Josh before. Um, and this is something that I always noticed with him and me. Now he and I never had like a romantic relationship, but we were, when, when, when you hear the words soulmate, this guy is my best friend. Like he and I just have this connection and we do that still to this day where mm -hmm. like um a couple of years ago I was, he's in town and we're we're at his parents house and we're sitting on the floor and I just I noticed it I think because I was thinking about Twilight <laughs> but I sat I was sitting on the floor next to him and my legs were out in front of me and I crossed my legs and the next like within five seconds he crossed his legs and then I was like I'm gonna see what is going on <laughs> and so I then like adjusted my like shoulders and then he adjusted his shoulders and I was like this is something that has been happening between the two of us since we met when we were 15 mm -hmm. and this is something that happens when you are when you have a relationship with somebody like that um and it's not just Edward and Bella but I'm sure it's very 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 pronounced with those two because they're so connected and because they're so weird that they do have this like incredible connection yeah yeah it's interesting, too, because Edward isn't someone who would, like, typically, like, fidget and move around. Mm -mm. And so when he does move, I feel like that's, like, has to be, like, an even bigger cue to Bella that, like, yeah. something's happening and to, like, uh -huh. shift with him. It's very interesting. It's really cool. Um, something I really do like about Renee is I personally love it when people tell things to me about me. Mm. <laughs> like, I like hearing how other people perceive me mm -hmm. and so I think it's really sweet that Renee took the time to sit and talk to Bella about what she's noticing with her relationship because Renee has to know that Charlie doesn't approve of them whatsoever and so you know that <laughs> yeah. Bella's not hearing anything nice about her relationship from Charlie so I think it's very sweet that Renee takes the time to yeah. appreciate them as a couple well, and tell Bella. So Bella was completely right because she was like I'm not going to get the kind of judgment from Renee that I get from Charlie. And maybe Renee will see us together mm -hmm. and realize that we're fine and she'll tell Charlie. Mm -hmm. And I, no, that, that does happen. Yeah. It's very sweet. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Edward says a cute thing about Renee about how, I don't know if it's necessarily cute, but he says that she does see the world differently and she does mm -hmm. think about people and things differently than most people do. And I thought about that too and I was like, that's why Bella's so special. Mm -hmm. Like, her parents are both special. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very they're cute. both very special people. Yep. Um, Renee is doing good. She's happy. And uh, she tries to convince Bella to move to Florida with her because <laughs> look at how hot and sweaty you can be. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, great. I was like, no, thank you. 
<laughs> I'm okay. Um, but seeing Renee like this also makes Bella feel a lot better about her decision to become a vampire because she sees that <laughs> <laughs> Renee will be okay without her. Yeah. So this is a big... There's lots of like important things happening on this trip. It is trip. important. It's so important. And it's kind of cool. I feel like um, this is unfortunate in one way, but it's also really cool that Bella and Renee kind of grew up together. I want to know Renee's backstory now. I never cared about it before, <laughs> but now I'm like, I'm interested to know what her upbringing was like for her to be so scared and so immature uh, as a young adult that she was, that she just couldn't get it together ever until her child was an adult. Mm -hmm. And now that she has it together, they grew up together, they figured it out together, they're on the same level now, kind of. Like, I think that's kind of a cool thing to have happened. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, like we said, Edward came up with a term, beeper, to avoid going outside while they were on their trip. <laughs> Oh boy, the things he'll do for Bella. I know, what is he writing about, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's just writing a book for Bella. Maybe. Wouldn't that be sweet? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, Life Since <laughs> I Turned Into a Vampire by Edward Cullen. <laughs> All the reasons why I'm damned. Oh no! <laughs> Number one. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> uh, and so they get back home. As soon as Bella walks through the door, Charlie comes over and gives her a big hug uh -huh. and tells her how much he missed her and her cooking. <laughs> and also, can you please call Jake? He's been calling every five minutes since six o'clock this morning. <laughs> I don't know why, but he really, really wants to talk to you now. <laughs> And then the phone rings. Oh my gosh, uh, Jacob, <laughs> he's overreacting. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, a little spoiler there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, turns out it's Jacob. <laughs> uh, he says, why haven't you called me? And she says, well, I just got home. <laughs> and she asks him why he's been harassing Charlie. And he pretty much just says, well, are you going to be at school tomorrow? And she says, yes. And he says, okay, cool. Bye. <laughs> what kind of... Jacob, you noodle. Weird phone call. <laughs> okay. I know she's so confused. Mm -hmm. What in the world? She goes through it. Why would he be calling every five minutes? And also, why... Would he only ask me if I was going to school? Yeah, so, okay, can I just real quick make a comment about how she just flew all the way across the country. Yeah, it's like a seven hour flight. And then got in the car and rode Four hours. all the way across <laughs> Washington. <laughs> she walks in the house and she's like, all right, I'll make dinner. Mm -hmm. Immediately. That's the first thing she does is start making dinner. Um, and so while she's making dinner, she's thinking about this conversation with Jacob. Mm -hmm. What in the... You know, putting stuff together, doing a chop, doing a stir. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It bothers me so much. I know I have been bothered about this since literal chapter two of Twilight. Uh -huh. It's still annoying to <laughs> this me. This is how Bella unwinds. She's sure. just okay. on autopilot I right guess. now. Let me do my happy thing. Yeah. Cook dinner. Yep. Um, Bella comes to the conclusion that this phone call was made to figure out if Bella was still, in fact, a human. <laughs> and she's like, well, I did leave for three days, so that must be what he's thinking. They think that Edward took me away and bit me. Oh my gosh. Remember when we were talking about how Bella just assumes everything is about her? <laughs> Yet another example. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, it turns out that's not why he was calling. Uh, he actually wanted to see if Edward was going to be at school so he could talk to him publicly and safely. Ew. These are the, the First drama of all, babies. beautifully publicly humiliate Edward by being how by many being inches six taller foot than him? <laughs> So much bigger mm -hmm. and stronger looking. Uh-huh. And... I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say better hair right now. 
It's growing out. It's like long. It's like my bangs. It's like on his forehead. Yeah. And it's black and it's shiny. And I mean, if you're into that, then yeah. I mean. <laughs> He's like, I gotta see if Edward's gonna be there so that I can go embarrass him. Well, yeah, not only that, but um, Jacob has ripped apart all of his clothes that fit him, and so he's wearing his t-shirt from, like, junior high, and it is tight. I definitely... It is on that bicep. Underlined tight black t-shirt in my book. <laughs> it's important. I underlined the words six foot seven, uh -huh. and then I underlined the words tight black t-shirt. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Um... <laughs> He's there, motorcycle on the sidewalk, just looking tall and scary. <laughs> and Bella notices this, and everyone's, like, kind of, like, not walking close to him and no. are, like, peeking at him. And she's like, this is hilarious. Everyone thinks that he looks dangerous. <laughs> little do they know, he's a sweetie deet. He's a little baby babe. <laughs> uh, before Jacob can really say anything, Edward is just like, Yes, a message received. Um, uh. <laughs> consider us warned. You can leave now. <laughs> and poor Bella is such a confusion. Oh, man. Um, and Jake's like, well, hey, Edward, does Bella know what happened? And Bella's like, what happened? <laughs> what? More secrets? How dare you? Uh, turns out Edward made a little lie about the vision that Alice had. Oh, and, uh, so Bella was right he... to make it all about herself. Casually came up once. with this vacation so <laughs> that they could be out of town. Because guess what? What? Victoria came back. Oh, my stomach hurts. That's the third worst thing on Bella's list of things <laughs> that are bad. The third worst. <laughs> Number one, Edward. Number two, <laughs> Arrow. Number three, yes. Victoria. Yes. It's the third worst thing. Uh -huh. and those are some pretty bad things. Oh, yeah. They uh, all make me have nightmares. They do. All of them. So, yeah, all the vamps and all the wolves were out hunting her. Paul gets angry because Emmett accidentally goes over the line. <laughs> treaty line. She's so nervous. Emmett and Paul? Oh no. Oh. Is Paul okay? Oh no. Have you seen Did Paul Emmett? get hurt? <laughs> Emmett is the biggest person I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> he could literally tear Paul in half. Does Paul have both arms still? <laughs> Concerning. A big concern. Uh, and then, uh, Edward and Jacob have a fight about Bella while she's standing right there. <laughs> well, so, she's like, uh, his face was abruptly frightening, truly frightening. For a second, he looked like, like a vampire. Ooh. And I wrote, bumpy forehead, sharp teeth. <laughs> yes. He vamped out for a second there. Yes. Um, Bella freaks out. Uh, with this news of Victoria, and Edward's like, look what you've done, Jacob. You made her all scared now. Is this what you wanted? And Jacob's like, hey, listen, it's better to be scared than to be lied to. Yes! Sir. Jacob, black. I agree. A hundred percent agree. And then Edward tries to come back with, do you really think hurting her is better than protecting her? Um... <laughs> Edward, you have gone too far. This is in this, this direction is, right now. Stop. You have taken it too far. Um, she needs to know what's going on. Yeah. This is this is a theme <laughs> in everything, and Mark talks about it incessantly. If everybody would just be honest with everybody, think of the problems that wouldn't happen. <sighs> so ever. many non problems <laughs> would be going around. Uh. Jacob tells him that she's tougher than you think, and she's been through worse. Mm. And then Jacob, of course, is remembering the zombie Bella. Yeah. And Edward is a cringe mm. and a grimace. <laughs> and <laughs> Jacob's like, ha ha. I know how. I can control you with my mind. Yes. And so Ed, Jacob. It's such a cool thing to be able to do. <laughs> yeah, he just starts thinking about Bella being sad and looking horrible and uh, crying and screaming. Yeah. And Edward's like, oh my god. Yeah. This is 
by like worse than he ever could yeah. have imagined. Yeah. Well, cause so so Jacob has seen Bella through Sam Yuli's eyes mm -hmm. when Sam found her in the forest. Yeah. Nobody else has seen that. Nobody else knows. But Sam came upon her looking all dead there mm -hmm. on the ground. And that's what Jacob, I mean, that's part of what Jacob showed Edward. Yeah. I love it. Because, Good. yeah, because Bella didn't, and still hasn't talked to Edward really about what she went through. No. And he only got, like, a second-hand account from Alice, and Alice obviously didn't see any of these things happening, and so... Yeah. For Edward to be able to actually see well, and what like, happened to Bella Jacob's is memory crazy. is as perfect as Sam's because he they basically share like a brain. Uh -huh. So it's so cool. Yeah. I I'm a fan of this. Me too. I think it's appropriate. I think Edward needed to <laughs> see and hopefully it'll help him understand uh, yep. their relationship a little bit better. Uh, yep. Uh, Bella tells Jacob to stop it and he's like, fine if you want, but like you should know. Mm -hmm. um, and then the principal comes over and threatens to call the cops if Jacob won't leave. <laughs> Imagine. Which Jacob is really wanting to happen. <laughs> this is so funny. These, like, <laughs> immortal, horrifying monster beings. And the principal is like, kids, get to class. Yeah, that's and the entire like, okay. first season of Buffy. Yes. So they're, like, trying to solve mysteries. And then they're like... <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> you can't Flutie. leave. And it's Flutie you coming leave. around. Yeah. He's like, you have to stay on school grounds. <laughs> and Buffy's like, uh, okay. okay. Jumps over the fence. Bye. <laughs> uh, before he leaves, though, he tells Bella that maybe they can still be friends on his side of the line and to come and visit. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's time to go to class, though, but Bella is furious as Ed at Edward, as she should be, and so they have a very serious notebook conversation. I love the notebook conversation. It's classic. Who hasn't have a, uh, had an angry notebook notes passing back and forth? I don't know anybody who hasn't. <laughs> Everybody has. I love it. Ugh. So she scribbles, uh, tell me everything, <laughs> you idiot, and, uh... He does. He says, uh, you know, Victoria came, all of us were out there trying to catch her, but she escaped down the boundary line. Emmett tried to grab her, and he accidentally went over the line, and Paul got mad, and uh, everyone kind of stopped looking at Victoria because <laughs> Rosalie got involved, and then, you know, me, <laughs> I had to go over there, and then they Sam came over. They all got distracted about their stupid fight we with were, each other. We were growling. They were barking. They could have, like, at that moment gotten rid of Victoria if they hadn't all been like, no, not my boyfriend. No, not my friend. Yeah. No. <laughs> Bunch of babies. These drama babies. <laughs> uh... She asks him, like, what about Charlie? She could have gone after Charlie. And Edward was like, oh, no, he was fine. Like, it was whatever. And she's like, no, you don't know that. You weren't there. Florida was a bad idea. <sighs> Before he can respond, she just writes, you will tell me next time. I mean, seriously. He agrees. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Yep. Then we have the funny and part. And she goes, I knew there would be a next time. The pattern would continue until <laughs> someone lost. You, Bella, you will lose. <laughs> <laughs> you will lose everything. Uh, the teacher comes over to Edward and goes, <laughs> is there something you'd like to share with the class? But Edward, he's on top of it. He just swaps out their convo for his lecture notes and is like, do you mean literally every word you've spoken this class period. <laughs> like he did a Harry Potter verbatim notes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and was like, they're right here. Here's the teacher lecture. reads it and is like, this kid is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Just walks away. Truly. Uh, Bella goes to her one class without Edward Cullen, and this is where she learns that all the boys at school have placed bets. <laughs> On so who funny. Would win in a fight. Edward so or Jacob. So funny. Oh my gosh. My money is on Edward Cullen. My money is 100% on Edward, but if I didn't know that he would win and I just saw the two of them, oh, yeah. Jacob Black. 100%. Well, He's yeah. so big. He's so big. Plus, you know, he's going to like. 
I don't know. He's going to be like a scrappy fighter. Oh, yeah. He's not going to fight fair. No, 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 no. He will, he'll bite, and he'll pull hair, mm -hmm. and he'll slap. Oh, yeah. But, um, <laughs> like, Edward, these guys are right, because some of the guys who are, who are like, Edward will win, because yeah. they're like, dude, he's super confident, he's scary, and think of his brothers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And then the other kids are like, but have you seen all the guys on the reservation? They're terrifying. They're all as big as Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so funny. I love they're, it. <laughs> they're all the same size. They are all these huge. It's a cult of, like, brown boys. They're beautiful and scary. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then there's all the scary big white boys. I don't know. But I would, if it was me, I'd be like, Jacob, 100%. He's so big yeah. and scary. I would like to see the fight. Yes. <laughs> For personal reasons yes. only. Yes. For my own reasons in my gut. Shirts might get ripped off. My uterus gut, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do know what you mean. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a beautiful, beautiful... I'm envisioning uh, this fight right now, and... <laughs> Not knowing that Ed, that Jacob would morph into a wolf, <laughs> so that's not in my brain. I'm just a kid at La Push at La Push High or Forks High, mm -hmm. just watching, <laughs> getting out my phone. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh my gosh! Someone would record that, and then you know, Rosalie <laughs> would show it to Carlisle and be like, "Look what these idiots did." <laughs> And they'd have to move. You're grounded. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, no. Beautiful. Really good. Really good, like, bringing it back to the high school. <laughs> to the fact that these are children. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot children. Dumb, dumb. Oh, so, pies. so good. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anything else? Oh... Not today. Okay. That I know of. Um, <laughs> it's getting warm. We don't know the future, so hopefully things are mm, at mm. least the same. Yeah. As the day that we're recording this. Yeah, it'll be close to the end of May, so hopefully, maybe we get to see a friend or two soon. Maybe. Let's let's hope, and we'll just uh, it's a day at a time. <laughs> every day, every day the sun goes down. I'm like. We did it. We did another day. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Not to be super grim or anything, <laughs> but it really is a one day at a time thing yeah. right now. So, mm -hmm. But we can do it. Yeah. We can get through it. We got this. This this, this stuff happens. We'll figure it out. Yep. I love you guys. Me too. You guys are the best. You're so good. Uh, thank you for remembering Eclipse with us today. Oh, this book is funny. It is. It's, I'm enjoying it thoroughly. <laughs> it's going to be even funnier, too. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay. You guys are awesome. Love you. Love you. Uh, and remember, if you really want to embarrass your crush's boyfriend, show up at the school looking super hot. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. speculate about the future anymore I used to feel like I had a grasp like I was like <laughs> things are not gonna get worse <laughs> they just keep doing so I can't say anything other than we'll just see <laughs> we'll be here anyway maybe who knows oops oh, oh yeah that's still going <laughs>